the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday televised Mass on this, the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is A. McCullough from Tweed, Ontario, in remembrance and the devotion to the memory of the dead. The second is Karen from Coburg, Ontario, in, honor, in memory of Alan. And the third is Alda Maderos from Ontario, Toronto, Ontario, for her health, for personal intentions, for those of her children and grandchildren, and for the repose of the soul of her husband, Jose Maderos. Our thanks go out to the donors for the gift of this Mass. And as we celebrate the Sunday Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the salt of the earth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light to all nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise God as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And so we pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both Jews and Gentiles into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and, its, and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in the place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So Christ Jesus came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles returned from their mission. They gathered around Jesus and told them, told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourself and rest a while, for many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we had Ezekiel. On the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we had Amos. And today, on the 16th Sunday, we have Jeremiah. And all these prophets have got just one message to the people. Remember, God is your God, and you are God's people. So for goodness sake, get your act together. But the people would not listen to them. They told the rulers to take care, to be shepherds to the people. But the rulers only were bothered with one thing, power, fame, and control. And they worked for their own cronies all around the place. 
In our own day, it seems to be that it's a deja vu city seen all over. It seems to be like that movie Groundhog Day, which goes on in a circle and a circle and never ends. Rulers and people in charge today are still looking for power, for fame. They're not bothered about the people so very often, and they are bothered about their cronies. And then uh, the scripture describes God in an anthropomorphic way. God like a human being bothered about the people. And God says, I'm fed up with all of you. I will take care of you. I will be your shepherd. And the beauty is that God could be counted upon. God had nothing to gain. God did not want power or fame. God did not have any favorites. So every work and effort were going to be done by God for the people. And God would never lose anybody from their flock. And what is more than, um, what is actually an added advantage is that God would make sure there would be a successor in the line of King David who would truly be there for the people. He would be a good shepherd. And that attitude of the good shepherd is seen in our second reading from the letter to the Ephesians, where everybody, all nations, would be united because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There would be no favorites of Jews or Gentiles or Jews above Gentiles. They would be united because the shepherd would bring them together as one flock. And how would he do this? He would do this because there would be a new law, a new covenant, and a new commandment. And this would join people together because the old law had become obsolete. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself. But the old law said, love your neighbor. But if your enemy hurts you, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And that law was totally obsolete. It could not be used in the new covenant with the new commandment to love one another. This was truly a good shepherd, even though it's not mentioned in the words of the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. So what exactly is the good shepherd going to do? A good shepherd would notice people who were weary and anxious, and he would lead them to restful waters to give them repose. A good shepherd would gather people into a flock, not leave them alone when the wolves came and the wolves scattered and made people diverse and divided. A good shepherd would call them by name. A good shepherd will know their sheep and the sheep would recognize their voice. And we see that in the gospel as the disciples come back. Jesus had sent them out in twos, 70 of them, and in other gospels, 72 of them. It's immaterial. But he sends them out in twos because if one of them was slacking, the other could encourage him. And if one of them was doing too much, the other would say, take it easy. And that is the reason why it's important that as we go out to proclaim God's news, we don't go out like solo acts, the Lone Ranger. We go out in company because it's Christ that joins us and unites us together in the proclamation of the kingdom. And so when they come back and they are so excited, we have made the blind see, we have made the deaf hear, we have made the lame begin to walk, we have exercised demons, Jesus is happy for them. But he sees that they are on a nervous breakdown because they've done so much, it's gone to their head, but they are physically exhausted. And so like a good shepherd, he will say, <clears throat> come away, let us rest by ourselves. And if you go to the Lake of Galilee and you see people in front of you and you see them take a boat to the other side, the lake is so small, you can literally go around and meet them before the boat comes there. And I've done that at times. And it's extraordinary. And that is exactly what the people did. They saw Jesus. They saw him doing all these wonderful things. They saw him get onto the boat and take people to a deserted place. And they went ahead to meet them. 
Now, Jesus really wanted to rest. But what happened was when he saw a people that cared, that did not have a shepherd to lead them or to guide them, his heart went out and he was there for them and for their needs. What exactly is a good shepherd doing? Let me end with a story. A story was told of a guide that was taking tourists in the Holy Land, and he would, they were going all the way from Jerusalem to Galilee. And as they passed by, they saw a shepherd taking the sheep. There were about 10 of them. And he was telling them, a shepherd always goes in front of them, leads them, calls them by name. But this particular man was behind them with a stick and leading them forward. So he asked the, by, the bus to stop. He went down and he says, are you trying to make a liar out of me? I always told all these tourists that a shepherd goes in front of the sheep. And the man smiled and said, sir, you're right. A shepherd always goes in front and calls them by name. But I'm not the shepherd. I'm the butcher of the town, and I'm leading these sheep to be slaughtered and killed. And so the call for us today is, are we shepherds or are we butchers? God bless you all. Would you join me now as we make our act of faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen and we bring our petitions now to God. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Cardinal Collins, and for all those who lead our church, and for our civil leaders as they take care of people during this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. For our TV Mass faith community, who have asked us to pray for them, and for the youth that are seeking employment, seeking a place to stay, and seeking a hope for the future, we pray to the Lord. For the world as it continues to struggle and find peace in this troublesome time, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, receive our prayers that we make through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servant and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered in, to the honor of your majesty may benefit to the salvation of all. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is, our, it is right that all creatures should serve you, all redeemers, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters. Remember Alan. Remember Jose Maderos, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant of peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks.